Hey love, you got your heart on your sleeve, but the shirt on acts a bit small. Hey you, yeah your colors are changing, the world ain't half bad after all. Na na na. Anyway, have I stumbled on a diamond in the rough? Well, somebody would think a gold nugget in the field too, because if we are back in gold country again, um, we're at Salmon Gums Community Caravan Park. There's all the details. Um, terrific, what a spot. It is a diamond in the rough. Um, we're halfway between, damn flies back again. Oh, we're halfway between um, Esperance and Norseman. I popped out here because of um, oh, Esperance, a lovely town. It's great, it's pumping, but it's it's just so damn busy and uh, only too pleased to get the hell out of there, to be honest with you. Just love the quiet piece out here. Look at it. We've got um, some powered sections out here. Um, I don't know how many bays there are, um, we've got, we're, there's number 10 here, so um, they're all booked out tonight. Ch bloody good price, very, very pleased with the price. And then hanging out over this place, that's your um, that's your non-powered, we're powered, that's non-powered. We've got water over here and uh, little kitchen facilities back down in here too. Alright, this is the main drag through Salmon Gum. Come from Esperance that way, go to Norseman that way. And if you blink, you miss it. Nah, it's not too bad. It's got, it's got a bit of depth to it. We've got, uh, I suppose there's an old store down there, school down over here. We've got old RSL uh, Memorial, at least we forget over here. And behind there, I can see a water tower. Big giveaway for the old train station that used to probably go through here. Actually, I didn't notice, but tucked over in the corner there is the uh, the pub. Well, I did notice when I drove through, but when I used to come through here, you didn't. But yeah, obviously, you spend some time and go down a little side street, some bits and pieces, you'll be amazed what you'll find. So yeah, the old uh, Salmon Gums Hotel, the general store right here that sell everything. SIM cards, gas bottle refills, you name it. Save you from all sorts of people tripping it down anyway. BP service station down on the corner and it uh, looks like we've got a, a garage over here, St. John Ambulance and a few residents. So yeah, there you have it in a nutshell. So uh, the, uh, the caravan park attendant there, uh, Greg, thanks Greg, set us up with uh, a local here that's a bit of a historian, I'm going to get some little facts from him and then I'm going to relay it to you and I'm going to look like an absolute genius. How good's that? <laughs> not hard, but no, it's a lot of hard work to make me look like a genius. Anyway, he is the, uh, the bloke here in the old general store. We'll go and see him. Here we go as we swing around. Here's the general store at Salmon Gums. It's also got the local post office nearby as well. But uh, actually all the little bits and pieces you can grab here. Well, behind me you will see the beautiful setting sun in the WA Salmon Guns area. We've had a very eventful day. I might be looking a little rosy because I've just gone and left the, uh, the beautiful Salmon Guns Hotel. Fabulous uh, owners in there. Great to have a little yak too and uh, a fine bit of their purchase of uh, amber liquid. Um, great little spot. Really, really enjoyed our stay here. We've actually picked up a couple of strays from the UK and um, they're making sure we get back uh, safe and sound. Dude's ahead having a wee chat with them right now. So, oh, loved it and um, loved it so much. Jude's actually put another uh, $20 over the counter at the caravan park and we're going to stay another another day. So while she's doing a little bit of uh, computer work, she, she wants me to go walk about. And I've got a couple of little insights of, uh, 
a little uh, historic, it's a factory or something I think it was. I'm going to go walk about and see if I can find it. So uh, look forward to a little stroll around the salmon gums. Just remember, this is the kind of things you can do. Um, out there, don't, don't, don't always look at the um, oh the big city lights and the glitz and things. It's being out here in country towns and uh, everybody's just so friendly and uh, you gain a hell of a lot of experience. Um, so yeah, watch the space. Tomorrow is another day. <laughs> what a hoot. Salmon Gums, awesome little town, love it. Back in 1896, probably put it back on the on the map. Um, way down there in Esperance with everybody arriving, with the gold rush behind me. They were coming up on camels, horses, and Cobb & Co, stagecoach. Every 16 miles, there needed to be kind of like a rest for the horses. So you left Esperance, you went to Gibson, and then you went to Grass Patch. Then you came to Salmon Gums. I can't remember what's between here and um, Norseman. There'd be a couple there as well. So at those locations too, there was um, soaks and wells, and um, that was used to refresh the horses. In the way of the Cobb Co, they had a, um, a, a fresh set horse, so that when the Cobb Co would come in, they'd take off the old horses that need a break, and then put on some fresh horses, and they continue their way. Later, a lot of the soaks got replaced with um, condensers. So um, I've seen that in Coolgardie in my episode there, where there was a huge condenser set up there. So it converted uh, like steam and things into water. Um, an expensive and long process way of um, getting water, but it was effective. Um, and then of course, yeah, we're now coming around about the 1925, I think when it was founded. Um, the name George Mann or something comes around that had a lot to do with the town as well. Um, and then, so that was yeah, 1925. Also, you've, you've, you've had the uh, the war, 1914, 1916, sort of thing, and you got the returning soldiers coming back. They were offered um, land around these areas. So yeah, you got your salmon gums, and then um, it went back down towards Esperance, and it skirted left and right. Um, obviously, those areas down there were more appealing because of coastal, a little bit more rainfall and bits and pieces like we've seen coming from uh, Houghton and all that sort of stuff. Up here though, they, they were doing it a little bit tough. And it actually wasn't until about 1949 that they realized that the reason they were doing it tough was that the soil was very deficient in um, phosphorus, copper, and zinc. An interesting fact that Mike told me was um, they put a telegraph line in. And when they were um, checking the telegraph line, where copper wire had actually fallen on the ground, there was a prolific amount of growth. So um, they um, started treating soil with those minerals. So now we're getting in around about that, um, yeah, our 2000, where this place is really starting to benefit from those kind of um, additives and bits and pieces. Still obviously needing a bit from Mother Nature too. This is a very dry um, spot for um, rainfall. And uh, basically a good crop is after a good rainfall. Day number two. Sorry, I uh, I took off on this little adventure without sort of uh, letting you in on what I'm up to. But uh, I've got the old bikes out of the shed and uh, gone for a ride up the road. Um, I have it on good authority um, that there was a, a, a business out in this neck of the woods. Um, a very interesting uh, ent entrepreneurial sort of fella, very industrious and uh, Kind of have a little bit of a funny story to it but uh, a bit of a sad story but uh, anyway it looks like i wasn't going to say anything until i thought i was on the right track and it looks like i'm on the right track so i'll just dive a little bit further and see what else i can find back with you soon stay tuned all right got some promising sign here some bricks on the trail so what i'm chasing down is some brick manufacturers way back in the early days 
they had the plan to make bricks so that they could build a lot of uh, the settlements around here and I'm not too sure what more I'll find but there is a whole pile of bricks so I just like to find a little more artifacts I don't know whether that's the old kiln or not I'll go and see if we can find a little bit more well I've had to stick a head net back on again flies are just driving you nuts especially when you're trying to sort of you know film and uh, GPS and things I've um make sure when you come into places like this that you do come prepared dudes made sure I've got water so uh and to to take plenty of it I'll try and get a good angle here for the sun so yeah make sure you got water plenty of it um I was actually tempted first you know to like, dump the bike and let's go for a quick scout around just as I was and it's like well hang on pack the bag you know throw in your, your uh, I've got my e in there I've got my um my GPS and uh, I haven't gone until I've made another waypoint so I can find my way back into here got a little walkie talkie but I'm a little bit out of range at the moment I think and your water and there's a first aid kit there too so yes just remember keep your head when you get in areas like these you get quite excited well past a lot of kerosene tins few broken bits of pottery and some building materials oh man flies are pretty thick and annoying bush is pretty well overgrown in here too so oh, a reasonable job trying to follow a bit of a track here a few trees down oh bingo I found it, thank you Mike. Mike was the man that gave me this information and he has been bang on the money. You little beauty, what I found here is an old, I'm, I'm not a builder, I'm not a brick maker, so I, I don't know how it worked. But I do know he said that there was a kind of like a mill thing. So that it must have been a um, something that could crush everything down but they hooked horses onto it and the horses walked around and around in this area here making I guess the clay to make the bricks it's not much of it but I found it cool so here it is like that needle in a haystack and thanks to those directions that Mike gave me look at that so that's it so somehow I guess maybe with the iron down there on the ground or this was a, like a hard pan area. I can only imagine that maybe there was some kind of wheels attached off of that, which was then attached to the horses, and the horses went round and round and ground up the the clay or something to help make their bricks. There you have it. The post. Well, some of you mightn't find that all exciting, but it's a bit of history. And uh, I mean, you just look around, you know, you sort of wonder, these guys are out here in the bush surviving. They come up with the idea that oh, we'll make all these bricks. Okay, I'll fill you in the rest of the story. Anyway, the story that Mike tells me is that these guys come up with a bright idea that they're going to make some bricks for building. So um, there's a little bit more that I've got to find, if I can, but um, I think they were on their second batch of bricks. <laughs> Somebody says, "Hey, um, I think we'll we'll knock off and we'll we'll go for a drink." Well, I could be all wrong with the story, but this is I might have blended off a bit. So anyway, they they had a whole pile of wood cut or something, and they thought, "Righty ho, we'll stoke up the old uh, the old kiln, and um, that that should hold us for a while whilst we we're we're down the pub having a drink." So that's what they did. Yeah, it's overstoked it apparently, I think. And the thing buddy will heat it up that much, caught fire, and uh, yeah, I think that was the end of their brick making day. <laughs> so I could be wrong. We'll see if we can find a little bit more information out of it, and Jude might pop it up on a little screen if we can find it. But I don't know, it's just one of those nice little towny stories that uh, it goes down well when you're over here in Salmon Gums um, that I like finding. 
So uh, I'll see if we can find anything else, any more remnants. I think there's a little pit over here where probably they dug the clay out to make the bricks. Yeah, and the kiln itself, whether that was a stockpile or whether that was a kiln. But uh, Mike said that there was a bunch of bricks or something that had been overglazed or something like that, which was because of the heat of the fire. So if I can find those, stay tuned. Yep, and here you go. Didn't have to go too far. This definitely looks like it could have been a pit that was utilised maybe for mixing, prepping, digging. So sort of tucked away in here. And then just over in the distance there is that that's where the, the little wheel was. Oh well, there you have it. I've done a little bit more exploring around the area and couldn't find too much. Most of it was all contained to this area. But yeah, just fascinating just uh, finding little treasures like that. It's a nice bit of history. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting uh, bombarded by these flies and I'm out in about 38 degrees heat. So she's pretty hot stuff walking around out here stumbling about in the heat so um yeah i think it's time i sort of make my way around back to the to the van so this might be my last transmission see you back at the van um fun ride that was at brickworks awesome love that and it was nice knowing the story about how the bloke sort of got that up and going and then basically burned it down to the ground <laughs> Um, and the town now, yeah, it's got a population around about 191, that was 2016. I think Mike told me it was around about 161 or something at the moment. But a great little town if you want to be um, away from the, the hustle and bustle or you just want to change the piece of quiet. The only thing that lets the town a little down a little bit is just the amount of property that it's available. So uh, that's all I've sort of heard from Mike there. But um, yeah, and our water, water supply is still even since 1896 right up till now it's still i believe they truck a lot of the water in from um esperance to service the town so um and that's uh bore water or something or spring water or something i don't know there it is in a nutshell salmon gun great little place to come visit um come check it out tomorrow we're sadly leaving heading up to norseman uh, we will spend the night there and get ourselves ready for the big crossing of the Nullarbor. Let's hope the weather holds out. At the moment, stinking hot here. 38, it's cooled down a little bit from my ride on the bike, but uh, still like a blast furnace. Sweet as, remember, keep watching. Click that like, comment, subscribe button and help us grow. We love it. New ground, oh new ground, old ground. Of course, a big adventure a few months ago started in the gold fields. Now I'm seriously back in the gold fields. This is Norseman, Beacon Lookout. So there you have one of the uh, the fax boards. If you can get that clear, the one crisp night in an 1894 prospector Laurie Sinclair tethered a horse to a tree outside his brother's tent. A site 300 meters southwest of here. A legend has that in the morning he found the horse lame and on inspecting it found a sizable chunk of gold bearing quartz stuck in its hoof. So it said it took 17 years for Norseman mines to produce a total of 500,000 ounces of gold. The slow going was in part of um, Norseman's gold bearing hard reef gold, not alluvial as found in Coolgardy. Uh, underground mining and this immensely hard rock was just one of the many challenges facing the district pioneers. Whew, yeah, look at that. That's rugged and that is hot. She's about 38 going on 39 today. Hardly, you can see the trees out in front, hardly a breath of the air out there. And it's hot going.
here we go I've seen it all now when I mean, you get your uh, your bull riding competitions your uh, chainsaw your wood chopping competitions and things uh, here in Norseman you come here for the rock drilling state championships competition how's that got a little course here where you can set up all your your rock drilling right in the middle of town how awesome is that <laughs> so we are in the middle of Norseman not a bad little town here yeah, obviously very transient from everybody coming across the Nullarbor and it's kind of like a place for a shower and water and supplies and bits and pieces and of course another grand pub so uh, yeah they've done a pretty good job of uh, trying to make the town look a little bit more upmarket and everything good on you looking good all right made it into the Morseman information center where they've got look this wicked big map on the wall so we started this morning i don't know whether we can get a little shot down there salmon gums you can see it so there we started down in salmon gums then about a 100k trip up to norseman and a great rv park here where we're gonna um spend the night it's free swimming pool we're gonna go over there now and have a have a swim and then um yeah I think the first stop's going to be just past Belladonia there. Oh, and here we go. Norseman has paid tribute to the horse named Norseman. This horse was credited with the birth of this town. How awesome is that? Appropriately named. Camels here in uh, Norseman, especially in the middle of the roundabout, um, you know, they, they were used a lot to cart people and gear. And the first time explorer um, Giles used camels. He travelled 220 miles in eight days without giving the camels water. The very big camel teams in WA consisted of 70 camels and four Afghans. Normally they travelled between 20 to 25 miles in a day in the desert country. So camels are sometimes known as ships in the desert due to their swaying walking style camel teams would collectively carry between 16 and 20 tons on their back. The large bull camel was expected to carry up to 1200 weight, that's 600 kilos, and smaller camels from 6 to 800 weight, which is 3 to 400 kilos. They were definitely the workhorses. Anyway, great place in Norseman, um, doing their best for the town here, information centre, terrific very nice very modern very flash terrific service from the girls inside there too well done and there was a bloke there too thank you Alrighty. well i'm not going to take my phone in i'm not going to take the camera in but we're going over to the uh norseman swimming pool and like uh bees to the honey pot there is campers and caravans and we all got the same idea so thanks uh norseman for putting on a swimming pool for us, well, and the locals obviously, but uh, terrific service to be able to come around here and uh, be in this kind of heat and be able to cool down in a, in a nice swimming pool. So, come back to you later. We'll show you the RV park that Norsemen are looking after us with too. So, we've been to the supermarket and gone and spent that. Um, got some, um, uh, what else we got? We got some fuel, we got some water to get. So, uh, Yep, Norseman will be able to repay you in kind. Well, welcome to our park up for the night. We're in Norseman and uh, we found a RV park. I think it's 72. Um, it's dusty. <laughs> I wouldn't want a windstorm up. <laughs> it would be incredible the dust around, but. Um, I think we counted some 21 odd sites, 24 sites or something. So um, you've got to be self-contained, all that sort of drama again, and contain all your, your uh, grey waste and things. Um, and it's in the, the back, sort of southern side of Norseman. I think you can see behind me here when the camera catches up. There's a caravan just pulling up through over there. That's the, uh, that's the toilet uh, dump site and the um, fill up station. So there's water there, but you've got to get your tokens from the information center. 
for the IGA. Um, and I think the information centre is closed on weekends and it's closed, I think it said between 1 and 2 uh, weekdays, but then you can go down the IGA and get them. So the $2 uh, a token, which gives you about 60 litres of water per hour. So we'll find that out tomorrow. We've got a couple of tokens. So uh, here we are. We're, we're parked in a nice little corner spot down here. It means that uh, we're not in anybody's way. We can still be uh, all hooked up. There are some uh, wagons over here that are still hooked up as well. Um, but yeah, no, it's a good little spot. Jude's um, sitting in the shade there. Um, I hate to tell her the temperature, <laughs> but I think the gauge inside the van says it's 42 degrees. So uh, between that temperature and then what you're feeling that's beating off the ground here, it is a stinker. Oh, I forgot how hot Kalgoorlie could be around this neck of the woods, eh? How hot the gold fields could be. Anyway, um, yeah, hunker down here for tonight, early morning, we're going to go across the Nullarbor. The whole goal with uh, this trip was to do the Nullarbor slowly. We've done it from um, Gold Coast to Kalgoorlie and Kalgoorlie back to the Gold Coast for homing reasons, but not for travelling. So I said to the dude, next time we come past this Nullarbor, we're taking it easy and yeah, as I said, weather permitting, hopefully she'll be good. Anyway, we're going to enjoy a Sanger. Just going to put one together and pour myself a drink. So, on the pools, the pools here are free. They open after 12 till 6, I think it was. And they were like, yeah, nice and cold. Loved it. So, I may even go back before closing and have another dip before we go to bed tonight. Thank you, Norseman. Oh, jeepers creepers, I just walked through a damn spider web. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have fun with that one, Jude. Take two.